Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hey there, guys. Insert Beatles song here. Okay. And Matt Munchkin. Yay! I am very scared, but glad to be here. <laughs> or something. <laughs> and also, Ronnie Reviewer, Silver Quill. This setup not perfect. I destroy. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh great! We have it all. Right. Now that the relationships are broken with the city of Griffinstone. Great! Brilliant! <laughs> Diplomatic failure. This is just like what happened in Pakistan. Oh my god! What? <laughs> and today we are reviewing episode eleven of season five. Overall episode number 102, titled Party Pooped, written by newcomer Nick Confalone, with storyboard by Sabrina Alberghetti and Nicole Wan, and story by Jason Thyssen and Jim Miller. In this episode, after an important summit with visiting Jacks goes wrong, Pinkie Pie embarks on a journey to the Jacks' homeland, that is Jackjakistan, to save Equestria's relationships with them. I'm going to jump right ahead and ask you guys for your opinions. And, of course, we're going to go inverted alphabetical order. So, Silver, what do you make of this episode? This episode was not perfect. Oh, I already made that joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we start well. It's, it's, too, it's too bad. It's, it, it's multiple applications. Mm. <laughs> this episode's funny because, well, funny weird, not funny haha. Though it's also funny haha. Uh, it's weird because... It's asking you to take some things really seriously and other things not so much. With the yaks, you're supposed to take to heart that, uh, you know, if this doesn't go well, they could start a war and it'd be this awful thing and we really want to win their friendship. And I watch how these guys behave and I think, no, I want to see Celestia crush these things. I want to see the glorious pony army trample. And push them back to the frozen north where they will remain forever forgotten. <laughs> because the, the top, the top three representatives. Oi, thank goodness for that little, uh, helpful yak. Because that adorableness gives some hope for the future. Now on the mm. Pinkie Pie side of things, uh, she's great. I mean, she does these fun, it's funny, it's energetic. Uh, and we learn something about Pinkie that I just want to sing from the rooftops. I think it's so great. So she is the saving grace of this episode, and uh, truly fun if you don't take her too seriously. The only uh, the only sore spot on the pony side is something that became a theme for well Twilight over three episodes. This whole princess status, where she doesn't have to do much, she'll get the credit. But I really wish she had shared the praise herself, even though Celestia knew. Who to thank? So, um, what about you, Norman? What do you think of it? Hmm, well, I'm gonna go out straight and say that Pinkie Pie was never my favorite character. Mm. And, <laughs> yeah, but. Shock oh. gasp! Oh my god, what are you talking about, Norman? Well, the thing is with Pinkie Pie. <laughs> it's over, you, you, you just ruined everything. We're done. <laughs> Hey, I, I need to set up my emotions for this one. Oh, you people. Nobody you. cares about what you feel. Uh, <laughs> kick you over the call. <laughs> oh. <No>. <laughs> Great. <laughs> awesome. You kicked your editor out. Well done, Norman. Well done. No, yes. but, um, how do I put Be it? Be nice to James. He has to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but anywho, but anywho, like, like I'm saying that Pinkie Pie was never my favorite of the main six. It's rarely that I see an episode where I like her character. And in this one, well, I totally dig what she's trying to do. And the few things I've watched of this episode, Pinkie Pie is not annoying. I do highly enjoy Pinkie Pie in this episode. Like, I don't know, like, was it Nick on Flown that did this episode? Yeah, it's Nick Confalone, the one who wrote this episode. Yeah, I, I think... to the show, by the yeah. way. First episode that he writes. Yeah, I think he may be a good replacement for Amy in terms of getting Pinkie Pie right. Because this episode totally works. I do enjoy the whole scene where Pinkie Pie travels to Yakistan. And, well, we get there when we get there, but I do enjoy this whole scene. And as for the Yaks, well... It's hard for me to defend them because they're big 
poopy heads. But oh, without your language. Oh my God, this swearing man. <laughs> also, that's racist. <laughs> How could you? Yeah. Oh, well, I am seeing where this is going. But, um, I, <laughs> That's I racist like... to the people of Catalonia. How dare you? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's racist to yaks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but I do, how, what's what I'm looking for? You, you guys, thanks for sidetracking me, but I do You're understand, <laughs> I do understand their <laughs> standpoint in this. And I think when we get there, I'll bring it up. But for now, uh, to the next person, Medi, right? Yes. My turn. It's fine. Hooray. Yeah, you should. I had to uh, rewatch this episode today. Um, I couldn't remember much of it. I remember the yaks. I remember how annoying they were. And saying, this is not authentic yak food. I'm like, well, yeah, obviously you're not in yak Yakistan. And, you know, <laughs> I'm like, why do you want to be friends with these brutes that are basically wrecking your kingdom? Like the first thing they do is wreck the inside of Twilight's castle. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, come uh, on. You, um, <laughs> almost every brownie will want to wreck that castle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true, I guess. But, um, yeah, being a Pinkie Pie episode, this is probably the episode where Pinkie Pie is under the most pressure. It's like, this party will stop a war! No pressure, Pinkie. Okay. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Pinkie Pie is my favorite character out of the whole show. Be because she is just so um impulsive and uh, probably the most authentic out of all the characters like but in this episode she she has to kind of put on a brave face and pretend yes i am going to get this done right and not going to let anybody down and you know she goes off on this crazy adventure to yak yakistan and you know um joins this this band she falls apart and you know, all this kind of things, and it was all in the space of an afternoon, and I'm like, this is Pinkie Pie logic. Yes. <laughs> um, you can, you know, bend the laws a little bit when you use a character like Pinkie Pie, which is, it's like, is this stuff true? Did it really happen, or is it all in her head? <laughs> um, maybe a mixture of both. I don't know, but <laughs> either way, it's still awesome to watch anyway. Is it the best Pinkie Pie episode? Probably not, but it wasn't bad. It was just the... The whole the relationship between the the yak or relationship is the wrong word, but the um, interaction between the yaks and the ponies was just really weird to me. Like nothing was right, you know. Um, not everything. They just instead of saying no, this isn't right, you know, complaining about it. No, they just broke it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it was just a very confusing episode for various reasons, and I think I only enjoyed it because it was a Pinkie Pie episode, which kind of clouds my judgment a bit, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's my turn now to talk about what I think of the episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I I think this is the most forgettable episode I have watched in a while, mm. of almost anything. Uh, I had to rewatch it twice before doing the review today, and I really don't, I don't know why. Uh, I kind of subscribe to all of your guys' points of view, uh, but there is one thing that you kept saying about, uh, Pinkie Pie being at her best on this episode, or Pinkie Pie being good on this episode, or like not, not her being annoying, not her being over the top. The one thing that happens in this show is that when the episode focuses around Pinkie Pie, she's the best. She is the absolute best. She's the most likable, she's the most helpful, she's the most resourceful, she's the best. But when the episode is not about her, there is a high possibility of uh, Pinkie Pie being used just as a tool to move the plot forward. I mean, I'm thinking on uh, Philly Vanilli. Does anybody remember that episode? Oh, yeah. I, I, that, 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 I prefer to forget. <laughs> that episode was Pinkie Pie at her worst. And that usually happens when she's not the focus. When she's the focus, Fine. And yeah, she was good in this one. But my god, is it, is it like, not, not memorable at all? Like, I watched it on the release date, and the only thing uh, on release date, and the only thing I remembered from it was, P- Twilight Sparkle is afraid of quesadillas. <laughs> That's the only thing I remembered. Nothing else. I was like, did I watch an episode today? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter, probably nothing. Hmm, why do I have the feeling that Twilight will be scared of quesadillas? I don't know why. <laughs> So, yeah, to me, this is, I, I, I'm not saying that that's because the episode is bad or anything, but 
it's just it's so uneventful. Especially because they render the, the the journey that Pinky does to to Jack Jackistan in like they render it completely meaningless. In a okay, let's be fair, a fairly funny uh, visual joke, but like why spending half of the episode going there if you're just gonna pull the string and get it out of there? I don't get it. It's 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 it's. I actually agree with Maddie. It's a very confusing episode. But let's talk about it. Uh, shall we go scene by scene or shall we talk about theme? Uh, I'm inclined to talk about theme because if we go scene by scene, we'll be here until next week. Mm, okay. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Well, can, can I start off with this? Because I, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, I'm getting the feeling that you guys don't see what I see in the yaks for this one. Because to me, uh, it, let, let's just say, can I go first or... Do we go by alphabetical well, order? Y- y- I don't know about you, Norman, but what I see is a perfect metaphor to the Sonic fandom, but okay. <laughs> oh, that's just low blow, man. Low blow. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not fair for the Jacks. You're absolutely right. It's a low blow. I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Shot, shots fired. Mm. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Oh boy. But yeah, let's let's go in alphabetical order. All let's right. let's talk about the, let's talk about the Jags, which seems to be one of the biggest issues for uh some of us here in this group. I'm not going to point any fingers. <laughs> but yeah, I mean what's 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 with the Jags that you don't like so much, uh Silver? What why why do they bother you so much? Uh, oh what's first you wanna point fingers? Here, I'll point fingers. <laughs> this is a radio show, so I can't really <laughs> emphasize this point, but <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine you pointing, pointing, pointing claws at me. It's fine. <laughs> I, I, I'm pointing at my DVD shelf right now. It's really pointless. <laughs> okay. I'm pointing at my find, Finding Nemo poster right now. It's pointless as well. <laughs> okay, so first things first. The, the yaks are led by a prince in a show aimed at a female audience. Mm-hmm. You can see where this is going right away. Let's tally up the number of princes we've had so far. We have had Prince Blue Blood. Mm-hmm. What a treasure. Prince Shining by Marriage Armor, who cries at weddings. And now Prince Yak, what's his face? Because he doesn't even really warrant a name in my book. Who throws tantrums and blows stuff up. And I just think, oh God, one day there might actually be a prince who's worth his salt. <laughs> one day probably. But probably not. But probably not. Serious finale. Mm-hmm. So there, there's the first warning sign. And it's like, the moment the, the prince said, you know, we throw tantrum if everything not perfect, I thought, oh god, the joke hasn't even happened and it's already old. <laughs> you know, I, I've been combing TV tropes trying to find the right term for this, but I've seen this in so many episodes, uh, shows, a visiting representative, you know, some bigwig comes over and everyone is bending over backwards to extend all the accommodations and he's acting like A complete jerk. And I always think in those, you know, you're representing your nation. You have to give a little in this situation. That's just good diplomacy. How can you be so stupid? Stop being stupid. And yet, here we have, the the show follows the rule of threes with the yaks. You know, they have to destroy at least three homesteads. And all I can think is, you know what? Blessings on Twilight for for trying to make friends with these guys. <laughs> Be- people criticized in the wake of this episode that Twilight didn't do anything. Not true. She set this up. She reached out. She overcame uh, 100 moons separation or some uh, indeterminate length of time. The problem is she fumbled the ball during the event, which we'll get into that. But as I watch these guys and see how they behave, all I could think is, you know what? Let them go to war. <laughs> As I've already said, I want to see Celestia curb stomp a nation, and she will. They yeah, watch well, the comic out there. But no, you see, if you do that, then you're gonna start. The, you're gonna have the Jacks doing their own holy war, and then Celestia is gonna have to take a lot of prisoners of war, create one Tanemo, and all those things. So it's not. I don't think it's a good idea. No. If they go to war, things can get pretty muddled. Look, I hear the moon is lovely this time of year, and a yet colony. <laughs> Far, far away on the moon would be simply divine. The little yak that Pinky met, that one little bundle of adorableness that doesn't talk, is the saving grace of the yak kingdom. Therein lies their future. 
Someone who's actually friendly, waves hello, and looks cute. Don't grow up to be like your prince. That's all I can ask. Ah. I, you know, I can see where you're coming from now, Silver, because usually when you have a, 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 like a, a high figure or like a, an important figure in any kind of show, both for children and for adults, they have to show a level of uh, decency, even if they are savages. I'm thinking about the wild people of uh, Game of Thrones right now. Like, even they had a representative that was educated and that was cultured, that wasn't throwing hissy fits or tantrums over things not being perfect or to their appeal. Yeah, I can see wh- where you're coming from now, that these characters are there just to be a narrative device. They are there to provide the comic relief. And they're not even and, that comic. Yeah, I was about to say that even that fails. Because well, it's not that funny. The, the, the thing with the yak is, and from my point of view, I, I don't see them as the comic relief. I see them as the driving force for the episode to get the ball rolling. And how I see the yaks is that they come from a faraway land from the north and visit Ponyville via Princess Twilight's invitation. So the first line that Twilight uttered was, they try to make everything authentic like home. And the thing is, from my point of view, it's a cultural difference. Like, it's a cultural misunderstanding or ultra class ultra or, clash not really clash but it's a different ideology on things like when the yaks uh, are presented their food and they're trying so hard like the ponies are trying so hard to make things feel like home and like silver said the yaks clearly stated from the very beginning that they are very picky when it comes to national pride <laughs> so when ponies try to do something like their local food, snow, theater act, um, beds and whatnot, it doesn't feel that way. So they are insulted. And, well, they go to a hissy fit. Do I agree with them? No, I do not agree with their hissy fit, but I do understand where they're coming from. But I'm thinking about it like if I were to go to, let's just say, James, your household for a visit, and you came to me saying that, oh, welcome, Norman. And I'll, uh, I'll, we, we have prepared you food from your home country, say something that you're familiar with and say, that's my favorite type of food. And when I eat it and it doesn't taste like how it tastes, I feel insulted. Probably I won't throw a hissy fit, but that's the feeling I'm getting there. It's like, well, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't present you food from your country. Yeah, so that's... I'll try to introduce you to my own food. Yeah, so... I will do the things that they do at the end of this episode. Yeah, I mean, but, but so the, that's the thing yeah. there. Like, um, Twilight's approach for get, being friends with the Yaks has been wrong from the very start. It's what mm-hmm. Pinkie Pie we're, did we're, at the we're, end. We're, we're, we're getting a bit off topic now. We are talking about the the, the yaks and all that, and we I just realized that we did skip Matt Munchkin's opinion. No, no, really. Maddie, what? No, didn't we? No, it's S. Oh, no, you're right. N M. Yeah, okay, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, Maddie, what did you think about uh, about the yaks? I found them really obnoxious and overly patriotic. That was probably why I find them so annoying, because they reminded me so much of Scotland. <laughs> and we can be. <laughs> this is not authentic, Haggis. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, they just annoyed me like nothing, as I said earlier, just nothing, nothing pleased them. Nothing was right. And... Instead of saying why it wasn't right, they were just like, this not authentic yak food. <laughs> you yak hungry. Yak smash. And, you well, know, they just, did mention uh, something uh, with the cake at the case. Like, they used too much vanilla extract <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Ponies use too much vanilla extract. Smash! And I'm like, yeah, that's good reasoning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. But their, their design, I find really appealing. I like that because... Although the the yaks, they look like Highland cows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you guys know what what those look like, they are pretty much just exactly like that design, except a little bit more red. But yeah, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you could make jumpers out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what Celestia should do if they do declare war. She's just going to be like, I'm going to either send you to the moon, or I'm going to make a jumper out of you. You get to decide. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> totally fine with that. <laughs> Celestia wearing her yak skin clothes. <laughs> wow. Someone, someone oh. needs to draw that princess exposition, I, which is what I call it, is just sitting wearing a yak jumper, and then there's just this yak that has no wool left on on him, just like standing there shivering. <laughs> then she's just like, "Well, you did declare war." <laughs> yes. Anyway. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, uh, oh god, I never thought it was gonna be the same Jim boys on these. Uh, I throughout the entire episode. I was reminded of the buffalo from, I will say it, over a barrel. Because mm. to me, those are the, the, one of the most obnoxious characters in the entire show. Like, I hated the buffalo in, in over a barrel. I thought they were terrible. They, they, they're on the same level as the dragons from Dragon Quest. Or anyone on putting your hoof down. If you have all of those, all of those annoying characters from those episodes, say, of course, you might imagine that I will hate these jacks, but I really don't. I mean, okay, fine, yeah, they are screechy, annoying, and they are not better than the Sonic fandom when it comes to, ah, this is not perfect, this smash, oh, I'm gonna <laughs> complain it on my life journal. Uh, it's, 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 but I don't know, I think that they go so, you see, this is the thing, is that when you have something so ridiculous and so annoying, if you don't go far enough with it, I I don't find it funny, but these guys they will throw a hissy fit over a tea party with cute little animals. That's hilarious. I mean, that's that's like, ah, oh, this tea cup no perfect, Jack's destroy, and then just they wreck that tea party, and I'm like, this is absolutely <laughs> hilarious. This is awesome. Yeah, that's perhaps my uh, the reason why I don't hate them all that much is because they are so ridiculous. That it actually becomes kind of funny. Mm. Uh, perhaps it's not the best kind of funny. Uh, uh, no, in fact, I will say it's not the best kind of funny. But it is, it is not the worst type of character that I have seen. Like, I, I bear them better than the buffalo. Than the, yeah, I bear them better than the buffaloes. I prefer the jacks over the buffaloes, like, tenfold. At least they don't have little, a little strong heart XP to annoy me. God, I hated her. I really? hate her. But, oh. yeah, seriously, I, I cannot put up with Little Strongheart. I think she's awful. She's the, 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 the Pocahontas <laughs> wannabe. <laughs> God, give me a meat grinder. I will throw her in there. Oh, wow. <sighs> oh, we are, we are Dark. a very strong, we are a very strong opinions today. <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 I can't help it. I haven't done a review in two weeks. I need to get it out. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, when it comes to the Jacks, I don't find them all annoying, but I can very easily see why people find them annoying. It's the, the same reason why I can put up with things like uh, Jar Jar Binks and Adam Sandler. Is that, <laughs> yeah, okay, I, yeah, you guys might find them annoying, but it doesn't bother me. I don't know why. I don't understand. Look, in all honesty, I don't want to say, you know, I'm willing to put up with this. I want to be entertained. I'm giving you my time. Don't, don't tell me I just have to put up with the show. I want to enjoy it. If I could just jump back to Norman's talk about uh, cultural differences, uh, this might be just my reaction to the, the current world, but I've grown very tired of of using cultural differences in a, as an excuse well, for how people behave. I mean, there comes a point where you say, okay, this is your culture, but you're not dealing with just your culture anymore. If there's no flexibility, then this is going to end in tears. Well, I understand what you mean, Silver, but the thing is... it. In the very beginnings, Twilight has uh, set the table for the yaks to react that way with what they want to present to the yaks with authentic yak food and authentic <laughs> everything yak yakistan is about. So if I were to invite you to my place and I serve you, let's just say, some food that you really enjoy, and I say, this is the authentic American Hi, let's just say that. And you eat it, something's off, maybe the water, the dough, or the toppings, or whatever it is, it's not the same. And you feel insulted. Let's just say... I, no, wait, hang, on, hang on, hang on. Because I won't feel insulted. I'll say, they, this isn't what I expected, but they are giving it their best shot. Uh, and it is a kind gesture. I am going to eat it. I, if maybe I'll make a comment on a way to improve it in the future... But by God, I'm not going to attack. 
that's because I'm not psychotic. Well, well I, am, I am, but, you know, well, your, average, your average Joe. But the, the no, but thing, Silver, you see, is that if you were like that, if every world leader was like that, then <laughs> the word conflict will be scratched from the dictionary. I mean, there's, there's, there, 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 I'm pretty sure that wars have been started for smaller reasons, and, and, and alliances have been broken for pettiest complaints than, oh, this food, no perfect! Well, you also have to remember that the Yaks characteristic here are in keen to barbarians. So, yeah. barbarians yeah, and, are... And weren't, and weren't they the bestest friends ever? Well, I don't know. I mean, Conan was awesome. Conan was a tool. <laughs> Conan <laughs> was a... Co- yeah, he was. <laughs> but, but still... Conan, Conan, to quote Discworld, the definition of a hero by Conan standards is he does whatever he wants. He's which chaotic sa- neutral. Sounds great to us, but then try to have him come into town and pick up after he's killed half the populace and stolen all your stuff. <laughs> chaotic no. neutral, my new... <laughs> No, no, he's not good Thank neutral. You. He's lawful neutral, if anything. We're not going to talk about alignments in Dungeons and Dragons. We're talking about culture clash. And I think that I, you, you, oh god, it sounds like I am almost kissing up to silver, but I am agreeing with everything he's saying is that there comes a point that you can use culture clash in your story before it turns into a, uh, into a tired, uh, exhausted resource. And at this point with this TV show, it is. Like, the characters are too smart to do something so stupid. And when it comes to culture class, this is kind of, like, inexcusable. It's like, yeah, okay, fine. This is not how it should go. Or this character shouldn't be acting like this. Like, wrecking and destroying everything. What is this? Really? Like, it's... Uh, at, th- at times it sounds like they're about to start a WWE sm- match, a SmackDown <laughs> thing, whatever. It's like, this is so ridiculous. Oh, there was no, you know, <laughs> build up, like, tension or anything. It was just, like, they just snapped right away with the first thing that was placed in front of them that they weren't happy with. You know, that it was mm-hmm. like, you know, it would have been more interesting to me if the acts were kind of trying their best to hold back their rage and then it was building up and building up and the main six were, they were seeing it happening in front of them and were trying their best to prevent it. But instead, the, the axe just went crazy over everything and then the, the, the main six were just standing there just watching them wreck their, their town. I'm like, do something about it! You know? <laughs> Don't just stand there and watch them wreck the joint, you know? Mm. Like, <laughs> this, this yeah. just came up in my mind. Like, okay, we got a prince here. What if he's the axe rendition of Prince Blue Blood? Mm. That I, that I demand that the little yak be Prince <laughs> Not blue blood. I don't have a positive prince to point towards. Prince not blood. But but well, then again, applying real life logic to the to to this cartoon might not be the best of the ideas. But when it gets in, it, when when logic gets in the way, I mean, kids nowadays don't. Uh, do, okay, uh, I'm gonna sound really really terrible now, but kids are smart. Kids are stupid. They are not dumb. They will question things. They will think about mm. things. They will, they will analyze things. Sometimes even more so than adults. Yeah. And when they are watching something, they will definitely ask these kinds of questions. So the message that you are sending with this episode, it's very much, oh, these uh, characters from other culture, cultures. If you try to please them with their culture and you get it wrong, they are going to get really mad about it, and they might throw you into uh, an armor warfare. Mm. That's probably the problem with this. I mean, the moral of this episode, I think it's a very good moral, but it's given in extremes. Mm. And people know that only Sith deal in absolutes. <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're touching off on all these things that just haunt, mm. haunt me. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, to back up to the show, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to raise the point, applying real-world logic. Applying real-world logic to this, obviously, uh, cartoon of pastel colored ponies this part they're asking us to treat very seriously as a legitimate threat and i think when you ask your audience to treat something with seriousness they're going to look at it very seriously and critically and yeah maybe a little bit more of the logic is going to come in with the yaks than it is with what they're going to do with pinky uh throughout the episode where it's not asking you to take it too seriously her quest is important her methods are comical so mm-hmm. it's it's sort of that 
dialogue between the writers and the audience, almost like a code. We're asking you to take this seriously because it's really important. And I'm saying back, I can't take this seriously. I want these guys to be crushed. You know what? Celestia can have the day off. Let Luna crush them. <laughs> a never-ending a never nightmare. Sister, the acts are annoying me again. <laughs> okay, Celestia, I'll go and do all the dirty work. So, as usual. <laughs> so we should definitely stop talking about about the Jacks and talk about the one character that we actually seem to all enjoy in this episode, which is Pinkie Pie. Yay! And and how her actions how she works so hard to to get these guys happy. Because I mean she's in every scene in this episode that has to do with the Jacks trying to be happy before she goes on her epic adventure. So what makes Pinkie Pie such a good character in this episode and by extension all the episodes that focus around her? Because that's a fascinating question that I never managed to find an answer for. Like, what makes... Because you know how sometimes this show, they will have good episodes focus on a character or another. Like, uh, Hurricane Fluttershy is a great Fluttershy episode, but putting your hoof down is a terrible Fluttershy episode. So it's not that when the character is the focus, it's the character at its best. Except with Pinkie Pie. So what is with her that makes her the best when she's the focus? I think it's like, the... uh, oh. Silva? No, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say inverted alphabetical order. So yeah, always assume that you have the turn of war, Silver. You always do. <laughs> I'd like to try and turn a phrase. <laughs> I think it has to do with the fact that in a lot of episodes where Pinky isn't the focus, she's treated as just a side gag. She makes the funny jokes. She uh, has the funny expressions or just acts silly. So she's more of a spectacle than a, than a story contributor. And I think we were supposed to laugh at her antics in, in Philly Vanilli. Unfortunately, they just came across as mean-spirited. Because when someone's crying, you don't keep making the same joke. <laughs> Isn't that right, Matt? Keeps calling me a pigeon munchkin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm very no, sensitive. No idea. No. No. You made George scream. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, but when it's a Pinkie Pie focused episode, when she suddenly has a goal in front of her, and that goal is to make others smile and be happy, she's like at her finest. She is this wonderful, outgoing, emotionally supportive character that, I'm sorry, if you can't root for her just a little, then you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, but that is, that is absolutely right. Uh, but I, but it's weird. I mean, it's only with her. That this happens. Like, maybe because the writing is so careful. Uh, How to put this thing? From my point of view, it comes down to a few aspects. The biggest one is the writer for this one. And for Nick here, being his first writing gig in the show and handling a tough character like Pinkie Pie, it's not easy. And he did, he did really well on this one to write Pinkie Pie as a likable character, and I'm looking forward for his future writing with the show. Like, I want to see what he does with another character, and Pinkie's behind as the sub character. But for this one, Pinkie Pie as the character in this episode works really well because, well, she does her best to make people happy and smile. From the very beginning, we can tell that. She's going to lead the role with how she tells Twilight to calm down. Nothing, everything's going to be fine. Tell those butterflies to go away and stuff. And she's the very supportive kind. She mm. is positive here. Yeah. As it goes, you can see her start to panic. And until the last event that happens, which was the snow, she's in total panic mode because everybody's putting a lot of stress on her. And <laughs> who knew that she could be even funny when she's under a lot of stress? Your pain gives us amusement. I yes. know. <laughs> well, you know that comedy is tragedy plus timing, right? So <laughs> Yeah. Anything to make Pinkie Pie suffer is always enjoyable <laughs> to see. Uh, true. That. But for her character, like... The journey that she had was another point of her characteristic where, hmm, she's alone. The monologue, I think she learned it from Spider-Man, was a bit annoying at parts, but she's kind of okay. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then again, she's it's a monologue, but she always has somebody listening to her. Kind of. Which Even is, if she puts them to sleep sometimes. Which is the joke here, because when she monologues, okay, when Spider-Man monologues, it's to himself and to the fourth wall, which is the audience. When Pinky does it here, you would expect the same thing, but no. The first one is with the passenger besides him. The second one is with Cherry Jubilee. The third one is with Cadence. <laughs> like, hmm, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, which, by the way, Cadence is in the episode. What? Really? I didn't know uh, this. <laughs> I'll have pl- I'll have plenty to say about her when we talk when we talk about yes. supporting characters. <laughs> but I think oh that, yeah, yeah. But I think that's well, all yeah. I have to say for Pinky now. Um, Eddie, what about you? Um, in this particular episode, like I said earlier, this um, she was under the most pressure in this episode out of any other because, like, you know, this party, if it goes wrong, it will start a war. And, you know, it's all on Pinky's shoulders. It's all her responsibility. So it's like there'll be a level, a point of pressure where she will eventually snap. We've seen it happen before. And I was really concerned that this would happen again. And, <laughs> you know, uh, that it, it didn't. She kind of held her own for the most part and you exactly what she had to do and just acted upon it on impulse, which in some cases, some people might think that that's one of her flaws. But in this episode, it was a good thing that, you know, she just disappeared off to Yak Yakistan without telling anybody. So, you know, everyone at home was sick, sick and worried about her. And then miraculously, Gummy had a letter saying, no, she's okay. She'll be back in time for the party. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> it's Pinkie Pie, you know, um, yeah, all the all the things that she was trying to do to make the the acts at home kept failing and failing, and it was like all the other main sixes were like, "It's it's all up to you, Pinky. You save the day." And she's <laughs> she's sitting there nervous and laughing, and it's like, "This is what I do when I'm nervous," <laughs> you know. <laughs> and oh, uh, it. It was just adorable just to see her try so hard and, you know, next to um, Twilight, to me, Pinkie Pie is probably the most intelligent out of the group. She just lacks the focus that Twilight has, maybe. She's the most observant one out of all of them. I mean, that is kind of sometimes used as plot convenience to move the, the story along, but it works for me. You just expect it from a character like that, really. And um, she can be incredibly annoying which she, she is a little bit in this episode well kind of a lot actually especially with the journey to Yak- Yakistan it's like the, the whole thing it's just so confusing and uh, but then you kind of just accept it because oh it's pinky logic you know which <laughs> isn't very fair but yeah you just you just kind of go with it <laughs> yeah. you know like and for the first for, time the, the physics work yeah. against her <laughs> yes just when she has to she's um, sent all the way back home like from Yak Yakistan, um, cause of the, um, the thing that happened with the, the sled, it, the snow collapsed beneath her and then she just kind of <laughs> flew back home and it was like just in time for, for the party more or less and that she suddenly had her eureka moment and then finds everyone in this, uh, basement where, you know, she's got, it's kind of creepy. She's got all of these notes about what everyone likes and, you know, she's planned ahead for her parents when they're 500 years old. And I'm like, gee, well, let's, let's, kinda, let's talk about that basement. Let's yeah, talk about Pinkie Pie's basement. You don't give corner. You don't want to talk about it. It's kind of like the bat cave, you know? <laughs> like, it was really bizarre to see. I mean, I was half expecting, like, CCTV, like, <laughs> monitors set up, you know, she's spying on everyone, and that's how she knows everyone. And <laughs> this show had established yeah. television monitors and that kind of technology, she will have yes. it. But so yes. far, this show hasn't done such a thing. But, James, you don't want to talk about your opinion on Pinky? Let's let's talk about the basement. I actually want right. to talk about Pinkie Pie's basement because that that includes that that's part of what Pinky uh, of Pinky's personality, and we didn't touch upon that uh, until Maddie mentioned it right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I assume that I am agreeing with you guys because yes, I agree that Pinky mm-hmm. is at her best on this episode, like mm-hmm. almost every time that she's the focus. But that basement, um, show of hands on an internet podcast. How many of you were thinking cupcakes when that happened? Uh, no. No. I, it was in the back of my mind, but I willfully suppressed it. Same here. 
Uh, look, oh, I, gosh. He was, it, it's, kind ahead, of, it, it's funny because Mad says it's, it's creepy that she's keeping records on everyone, which, yeah, it, it, I can see it is a bit stalkerish. Stop, yeah, I, was, I was, you took the words <laughs> out of my mouth. But that, Sorry. But that, well, as thanks to you, I'm now picturing, uh, Pinky just standing behind a row of monitors going, beautiful. <laughs> so, thanks for that. Thanks so much. You're but, welcome. But, I'm the Batman. <laughs> I actually, I love it. I love, okay, how to describe this? During a, a very long retrospective on season four, I was with one other reviewer and he was talking about how Pinkie Pie's an idiot. And I saw that, and I thought of that as he, uh, we were watching this. And I thought, you know what? This is why people underestimate Pinkie. They assume because she's lighthearted and energetic, she, there's not a lot going on upstairs. And when we were talking about Slice of Life, I said that Gummy's unique monologue was sort of a, a, a prep for this. More, there's a lot more going on underneath Gummy's surface than we knew, and there's a lot more going on to Pinky than we want than we realize. She puts a lot of time and energy and awareness into this. It's not just spontaneous uh, mm. bouncing around. She's yeah. got a system and notes, and she's planning ahead. She this is her passion shining through, and it just puts a whole new spin on. It. She's still lighthearted mm. and bubbly. But she also, it also shows the care and energy that goes into being a party planner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, Pinky's always been a character that's not necessarily dumb, but she's always been on a different wavelength to everyone else. Like, on, almost on her own wavelength, really. So, <laughs> which can be misinterpreted as kind of, you know, stupidity or ignorance. But, um, to me, it's like, no, she's the smart one. It's everyone else that's the stupid one because they don't understand her. <laughs> Uh, you're the one who are the same. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like judgmental because they don't bother to see beyond the, you know, the poofiness and the happiness and the, the cheerfulness. People usually confuse uh, happiness with obliviousness, which is something that is uh, applied to Pinky more often than not. I, th- I don't know who it was, but they kept describing Pinkie Pie as the most oblivious character in the entire show. And I always was annoyed yeah. by that because there was there, every single episode that there was that hint of she knows more than she's letting yeah. it seen. And this proves it. I mean, she has plans for plans. She, she, she's, like, I think it's Rainbow who says it, she might be more organized than Twilight. And I'm not sure about her filing system, but from the looks of it, it kind of feels like it. Because the way that Pinky plans things and all that, yeah, there is no way that that could have been just randomly organized. She hides... Uh, she has uh, every type of emergency covered, every type of party covered. She just has very good planning ahead. And doesn't panic. She keeps a cheerful, happy attitude. Mm-hmm. Well, Until this episode. It, <laughs> yeah. But think... even, even, even in this episode when she's, she's worried and panicking, she knows exactly what she has to do, which is go to that, go to Jakistan and go get some, something from there. Mm-hmm. However, that's not. And the solution to the problem, because not you cannot always go to um uh, to that country of uh, the country of origin to get what the person wants. Mm-hmm. There is always a way around things. It's not there is not just one solution to one problem. There are several. Mm-hmm. And well, that was one. It failed, so they went for another one. And well, in this episode, like the basement, especially the basement here, it opens up a lot of Pinky's mindset or how the way Pinky thinks, because. Like before, we always thought she was random and she was oblivious or a whole other slew of words you can use for her. Uh, in about time, she has emergencies for almost everything, like ball, eye patch, um, other stuff. And if we didn't look at this episode, if we look at the episode by itself, it's just Pinky being random. But mm. once we look at this episode, it's her planning ahead. Like, she has the answers for almost everything. And, well, this is kind of interesting, because is she a ditzy character, a klutz? Or does she know more than she's leading on? Because, well, I'm, the way I'm looking here is with especially the list that she has for Twilight, like red balloons, dancing, vanilla ice cream, and hates quesadillas. Or afraid of quesadillas. Like, those things, when you think about it, all those intimate details, 
those can't be gathered in one sitting. Those things, well, it takes time to study. Which brings up the question of, is she smarter than Twilight? Or are they on a different wavelength? I, think, I don't. I don't think you can simply say, "Oh, one's smarter than the other." Uh, they have very different styles, and those styles will work very differently depending on the situation. Pinky is a is a party I, uh, planner I'd want to have on hand for an event, but I wouldn't want her running the nation as Twilight is supposed to. This is Pinky's strength. It's a very selective strength, and Twilight learns about everything she can. I mean. You put a topic in front of her and she'll eat it up. Pinky, the only thing she'll eat up are the confectionaries. Hmm. <laughs> well, I, I do need to remind you guys that Pinky was the only one that read the facts on the yaks before they came. And also, she was the one that uh, read up on Twilight's note for Griffin Stone. Mm-hmm. So, th- with that there, like, she cares about what others want. We can say that this season so far is making is painting Pinkie Pie is a more attentive, a bit less oblivious, more intelligent character than she has been presented as in the previous seasons. Like, can you imagine Pinkie season one Pinkie Pie doing this kind of thing? No, no, no you wouldn't. You would you would think Pinkie Pie will just keep throwing pies at the jacks until she just runs them <laughs> out, and then you will have a war. That's what Pinkie Pie season one will do. This Pinkie Pie is a lot smarter than that. Now you see, if, if someone had accidentally thrown a pie in the yak's face, if that had gotten this whole thing started, I would be like, okay, yeah, that's kind of an offense. You've just been humiliated. Yeah, and, that's, that's, yeah. well, considering that in Over a Barrel they use pies as weapons, <laughs> you can actually say that it can, it, it could have been like an assassination attempt, kind of like, like President Kennedy has been shot. It's like, same thing with this. It's, 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 that, that's <laughs> it'll be like, oh no, internal. International conflict. Well, when you have, bu- when the equivalent of bullets in Equestria are apple pies, um, <laughs> which is weird, they eat their own ammunition. <laughs> I don't get it. That's like you start to eat in a, a, a bombshell or something like that. <laughs> then, yeah, it, that would have been a bad idea, but this is kind of like being more diplomatic than some diplomats are in the real world. <laughs> Like at this point, they will be going to the United Nations building to declare uh, to to declare war to another country. Thankfully, they don't have to do that. <laughs> That's for Pinkie Pie as a character. Now, we have to talk about the supporting cast, yeah. and that I will say that in, that also includes the 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 main the rest of the main six because even though they are there, they are barely on this episode because it's it's a Pinkie Pie episode, of course. Mm-hmm. So, except for Twilight, oh. except for Twilight, yeah. of course. Okay. So, yeah, supporting cast. What about okay. these guys? Uh, you know, I realize I, I, I have sounded like I'm on such a warpath with this episode. I didn't <laughs> <have fun. laughs> it, it, it kind it, of does sound like you have a bone to pick with it, yes. I have a bone to pick with the Yaks primarily. Uh, Pinky, I, I adore her. Uh, but the supporting cast, you, I agree, the, the most of the main six, they're present, they have some fun liners, but, uh, really they're not stand out. Uh, the, uh, the big supporting character for me is Twilight, who, again, she, when people say she didn't do anything this episode, no, she helped get the ball rolling. She set this up. We're th- mm-hmm. And we learned some adorable things about her, her fear of quesadillas, her pride that Pinky not beat her at organization. <laughs> heavens. Heavens. But the two things, one, I'm glad she acknowledged that she was putting pressure on Pinky. And this ties into Princess Spike and, uh, and this episode and maybe even, uh, Amending Fences when we get to it. There's this sort of, there's this trend I've noticed that the princesses remain blameless when things go wrong, but receive the praise when they go right. Uh, yeah. cadence, cadence in games ponies play. Absent for the whole thing, and yet somehow it's not, she doesn't ba- face any responsibility, uh, when finally confronted by Miss Harshwinny. Here, twi- it's it's the reverse. Pinky saves the day, realizes the lesson, teaches the princess a friendship, I think, in some uh, intercultural relations. And when Celestia says, well done, Twilight, it would have meant a lot if Twilight had said, the real credit goes to Pinky. It's like she's receiving the praise, but in humility, she's passing it along to the to the one who truly earned it. 
Twilight got this started, but she folded when things got tough. And I was yeah. sorry to see that. Now, Celestia, next supporting character, she knows. She, she gives that knowing smile and, and praise to Pinky. It just would have meant more if, if Pinky had, uh, if Twilight had praised her friend. Yeah. And, uh, I will say a lot of the other supporting cast, like, uh, Cherry Jubilee, good to see her again. Not a lot to say there. Just good to see her. She's still friendly. But Cadence. Oh, Cadence. Why? <laughs> I, I so want you to be an active participant. We're just coming off, uh, Princess Spike, where you were anything but active. Could, you're sending Pinky to a land from which no pony has ever returned and you're not giving her a guard? I don't know if you know, there's this guy named Flash Sentry in your kingdom. <laughs> uh, and hundreds of others that I'm sure you can, you know, spare for uh, just, you know, just they're, they're too hours, important. maybe. They're, no, those, those were important. Like, Flash is the only one that's flexible. I'm just ah. saying that, okay, if you, if you sent Flash along, one, bonus points, because he's actually getting to do something. He doesn't have to speak. He can just fend off the uh, the killer uh, yeah, snow more. bear. <laughs> Throw him more. at the monster. Use him it's as like a decoy. Run away. Baboon <laughs> yaki thing. I don't know. Mm, I think it's called uh, the Gormok. G-M-O-R-K. Isn't I'll that take... a monster from Monster Hunter 4? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, oh, we're going there. Uh, but if Flash can fend it off or at least have a scene where he's, you know, distracting it, hey, bonus points, he gets to do something a little more positive. If he gets eaten, bonus points, he's eaten more positive. Them <laughs> cheers. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, it, it will never get old. But I just like, what, how could you send one of the six great defenders in the land off without a guard and just say, oh, good luck? You know what? That's to yeah. your good luck. I think because what you just said, she's one of the six big defenders of the land. That's like, that, uh, that, I think that's the same kind of complaint that's like, oh hey, look, Iron Man is saving the president of the United States who got kidnapped by this megalomaniac. Uh, Black Widow, do you want to help? Uh, no, I don't feel like it. Captain, do you want to help? Ah, uh, nah, he has it covered, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think it's the same thing here, it's like, why don't you help her? Because the story doesn't, doesn't ask for that. Yeah. The story is Pinkie Pie on her own, Pinkie Pie does this, Pinkie Pie does that. Yeah. No other reason. I, I guess that from the logic of the writers, if they put another character to go with her, that will like make her weaker or diminish her character or distract. Or maybe they, did, they couldn't afford to get the voice actor for Flash Sentry to voice hey, him. Vincent will do it, man. Vincent will do it. Of course he will do it. You don't even need him to say anything. He just has to jump at the monster, the Garwatsaka, and uh, and just, you know, distract it. You know, fly around while it's swiping at him. Pinky dashes off. They both look distracted when she goes sliding by on the way back. <laughs> and, you know, doesn't even need speaking lines. Mostly it's just... Cadence is there. She's always there, but she's never really a participant, and it's so frustrating. Well, that's what happens. She's the flower pot princess. That's that's. By the way, and it kills me to to put it like that because I really like Cadence. I like Cadence a lot, but she is like her empire completely underutilized. Like uh, the Hasbro sales. Same goes. Same goes with Shining Armor. Get, I have a Cadence and Shining Armor plushies here with me in my computer room. I love these guys, and they do so li- little to nothing with them on the TV show. On the comics, they, they are great. On the comics, they are genuinely great. But on the TV show, they do nothing with them, and it's just so disappointing. So we got off topic. Yes. Well, <laughs> I've, I've pretty much chimed in on all the supporting characters. I mean, everyone's just a little off. There's always one little thing that's like, oh, this is what's keeping me from really enjoying all every character except Pinkie Pie. I mean, I don't know. For me, when it comes to the supporting cast in the show, um, the main six here were pretty okay. I mean, nothing out of the blue which comes to mind except a few scenes. Like, Twilight did an awesome job with what she was given in this role here. And Apple Jazz, I don't know, I mean, like, most of the few things I see that stands out to me is just Twilight and Fluttershy. Like, Fluttershy's line is like, so, 
do we climb up the slide or what? <laughs> That's just <laughs> that is just memorable for me. Yeah. Uh, uh, flutter, than, flutter dry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, other than that, like besides Terry Jubilee, which is a welcome back to sea, and other than that, like she is just fun. She, I forgot how she sounded like. Um. Thanks, Flim Flam, for giving me that image of a dictator. But uh, this one is just much better. I, I do highly enjoy Cherry here being the tired pony who has to count cherries, like 417,234 of them. And other than that, everyone else played an awesome job. Like everyone who was a speaking role did awesomely, except for Cadence. <laughs> <laughs> May I correct you there before you go any further? It wasn't Finn Flam Philosophy who did the, the portrayal of Cherry Jubilee as a dictator. Those were the guys who did Friendship is Witchcraft. Ah, uh, okay, my bad. Finn Flam Philosophy are the guys who do the, the mentally advanced series and who have an unhealthy obsession with our friend Silver Quill. <laughs> that's, no that's comment. That. No comment. Yeah. But still, th- th- that stands out more. But this one, she, she has her countryisms. Like, she and Applejack could do a countryism off. Yeehaw! Countryism off. Yeah, okay. I am also glad to see Cheryl Jubilee back. She yeah. was fun. Mm-hmm. What about you, Maddie? What do you think of the supporting cast? I just keep wondering why. In some of these episodes, they're, they're like, we have to use the main six in every episode we possibly can for no apparent reason. Otherwise, we have to utilize every single character we have just because they're there. You know, and this episode very much felt like that to me. But, there were some points where, you know, there were some scenes where you could have just had Twilight and Pinkie Pie in some of the episodes, you know, like, in some of the, some of the scenes, especially the first scene, maybe. And then later on, when the main six panic and organize a party, it's, you know, or when they discover the basement. Yeah, use those characters then. Or, you know, when they're each trying to show the yaks how, you know, to feel at home by um, doing various things like, you know, rarity with the fabric and Fluttershy with the, the animals and, um, yeah, all the other stuff they try and do. I I just keep asking myself, why were they in the first scene, like all of them? Oh. It just doesn't really seem like they were needed there, really. That, that's easy, um, that's easy, because yeah. the main six are the element of harmony. They are considered yeah. to be the massive power in Equestra, um, I would equate them as the Avengers. So they're there to represent the yaks, yeah, like showing of goodwill and fate. So them being there yeah. represents a friendly bond with the yaks. I'm just trying to figure out structure-wise, really, like why they were all there from the beginning. Because when they've each got a scene with the yaks later on, um, but then that just might be me just being picky, as I usually am. But <laughs> um, <laughs> the main scenes that kind of stand out the, the most really was the basement scene where um, Pinkie Pie slides up the slide like Mary Poppins and, <laughs> and Fluttershy is the only one that actually questions the logic. Um, should we walk up the slide or, you know... <laughs> I thought that was just perfect. <laughs> just what I wanted to see a scene of them just trying to use utilize Pinkie Pie's logic of defying gravity, but no, we won't get to see that, unfortunately. <laughs> the toilet can magic them but, out of the hole anyway. But it was so. also yeah, it was also funny to me. I'm like, well, you fell through the trap door, Fluttershot. You could just fly out, you know. <laughs> I'm sure the trap door is still open, wasn't it? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I um, can hope. <laughs> no, they're just trapped there forever. It really is cupcakes. No. Dear God. No. no. <laughs> um, Those yeah, balloons you guys are were... made of ponies. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like when she was on the journey to y- Yakistan and um, how Cadence just suddenly appeared, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I was just wanted to scream, plot convenience. You know, she happens to be, uh, you know, near the Crystal Empire. Oh, yes, let's have Princess Cadence there for no apparent reason. <laughs> and just, you know, sends her off up this dangerous mountain and uh, <laughs> where she could die on her own. It's like, oh, yeah, I've got all these guards over there, but, uh, you know, I think they're going to be watching Doctor Who or something, so <laughs> none of them can, can go with you, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. But off you go. Good luck. <laughs> 
Now I'm off to get my hair done or something. You know. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to die. You're one of the main characters. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. You have main character immunity. You're going to be yes. fine. Yes. It's okay. You lost a red shirt. You're all right. <laughs> You're a main character yeah. in a show produced by Hasbro for little kids. You are going to yes. be okay. Mm-hmm. Optimus Prime. <laughs> anyway. Mm. <laughs> you things? You, you know, you know what you just said, Maddie. You reminded me of something. Why did they put a Beatles reference in this episode? Why not? What? True. What? I'm no, but, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Why not? But like, even with Pinkie Pie standards, that's so like, random. That's meaningless. Me, me, no, meaningless. It's like you can totally have a throwaway. Jo- throwaway jokes are. A kind of like a, they they are like memes. They are an art form in in their own because memes can say something, mm-hmm. or they can convey a message, or they can have uh, more to them. This reference to the Beatles is just a reference for reference's sake. Like, what is the point of making that? Well, it is a well, it is a I funny don't joke. It. It's a funny joke to be inserted. Like. There's no other thing than, well, technically, they use, uh, in the show, they use this as a plot device to get to the Crystal Empire, because when they broke up, it was in the Crystal Empire. Probably one of the ponies got in love with a very crystal pony mm-hmm. over there, and, well, that's about it. Fun fact, mm-hmm. if you take a look, see at the picture, um, Pinkie Pie's playing the drums. She's Ringo. She's Ringo. Yeah, and also in Equestria Girls, she plays the girl drums. She, yeah. That is yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> but no, okay. Not to talk. I'm not gonna talk about the, the the supporting characters. Not that I not that I noticed. But I want to think that the whole trouble to Jack Jackistan and all that did happen inside Pinkie Pie's head. Yeah. That she did. It, it, none of that really happened. That between her going to Jack Jackistan and and her crashing onto her bed, she just banged her head. And just fell back, and she was back to her to her room, and none of that actually happened. <laughs> no, like, that, oh, she was well, just having head. another. She was oh, just right. having another psychotic episode or something. Oh wow! We get one Inception argument every season. Yeah. Uh, can't cancel at wedding. Twilight. They lost the fight, and everything after is Twilight dreaming while trapped inside a chrysalis. <laughs> uh... Season three, Magical Mystery Cure, Twilight really did die, and this is just everything after is her afterlife. Uh, Daring Don't, Rainbow hit her head and drained the whole thing. We, 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 this argument takes many forms. Yeah, I don't How, agree with that. I do not agree with that. But I, I do want to point out one, one thing with the, uh, with the Beatles oh. reference. It's the same question of why we have a reference to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, or James Bond, or, uh, the Big Lebowski. Mm-hmm. There are, Adults, parents watching this show with their kids. And while the parents themselves may not be bronies, they don't want to be bored or rolling their eyes at this show. So I think the staff wisely puts in some references for older people to just enjoy and say, hey, I recognize that. that. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly you're entertaining both audiences because as Walt Disney once said, if you only aim at kids, you're dead. Mm -hmm. So I I think that's I think that's the real reason for uh for a Beatles reference. You recognize uh, the older folks will say, "Hey, that's cool." <laughs> no, well, I'm not questioning the legitimacy of the reference. I like any time that this show makes references. Like uh, hell, episode 100 was <laughs> that from beginning to end. I mean, come on, and references that I'm pretty sure not even some adults will get. Like that unhealthy obsession with uh, with therapy and all that, <laughs> but I, I'm not questioning uh, why it's there. I'm questioning what is it trying to say, or what is the point. And no, I'm not going to take the argument. Oh, it's Minky Pie. Don't worry about it. No, mm. I don't care about that. That doesn't work with me anymore. I want to know what was the thought process of, well guys, we need to put a throw, we need to put a throwaway joke here. What should we do? Oh, we know. Let's put on the Beatles. Why? Because it's Pinky Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Professional writer. Off we go. go. Oh, don't Where be is that my mean. paycheck? Thank you. Bye. Don't be that I am mean. being that mean. I mean, come on. No, I am. I am, I am actually mean on the, on that one. 
Because this, come on, you guys. This, this what is the point reasons. of that? Like, it's like quite I don't care. Silver said, sil- but like what Silva said. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. But but what is he trying to say? It's not saying anything to me. It doesn't. It doesn't speak to me. I'm like, okay, fine. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But... It's weird. Out of all the things that I could help about on this episode, I'm helping on that one. Wow. But anywho, but anywho. And what it's do not we like I don't, ha- yeah. I don't like the Beatles. I... I like the Beatles. Final thoughts on this episode. Good Pinkie Pie episode, not necessarily a good episode of MLP altogether because of all the confusion with the, you know, political kind of uh, relationships between the yaks and the ponies, blah, 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 already covered, really. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good Pinkie Pie episode, full stop. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. What can I say? This, uh, this episode is a great Pinkie Pie episode. She is the saving grace. It's sort of the, it's that sense of frustration that everyone else is being put in a, in a negative light or an ineffective light to really push it to a higher tier. Right now, I, I view this episode as middle of the road with a few hiccups, but it's Pinkie Pie that makes it nearly great, but just shy. Ah, and maybe that's why I seem to be on the warpath. I know it's so close to being more. As for me, when I, Take a look at this episode. I I enjoyed it. It's how do I put it? It's like the whole tirade of the yaks that you guys have or had was kind of understandable. But I see a different point of view in my eyes because of how I, I'm guessing where I'm born and how I live my life is more conservative. And I do see this kind of people sometimes. And well... I can relate, and I do see their narrow-minded point of view. And, well, I'm not saying that it's wrong, but it does make an annoying character. Other than that, Pinkie Pie is awesome. The main six, or the main five here, not used to their fullest potential, but they're memorable. They're memorable. The most memorable one is Fluttershy. Other than that, other characters, like the background characters, like Cherry Jubilee... Um, Mrs. Cake, and I think those are the only two lines, right? Oh, there's also Cadence, yes. They did a pretty good job. Cadence could have done more. But hey, I'm not complaining. I do highly enjoy this episode. And James, what about you, man? Uh, completely the opposite. I mean, okay, thinking about it, it's not a bad, it's not a bad episode. And even the Jacks didn't annoy me all that much, but it's just not, it doesn't stick. It doesn't. St- it not. It doesn't stay here. Doesn't get to my memory. It, I, I, I'm sorry, but it is still as forgettable as when I when I first watched it. Doesn't doesn't stick with me. So yeah, it's a forgettable episode. It's not a bad episode. It's well done, competently done. It's a. I guess it's better first episode uh, than uh, for a new writer than the mysterious murder. Well, hell, my gosh, anything is better than that episode. Uh, when it comes to, to, to debuts. But it's just not my type. And it kills me because Pinkie Pie is awesome. I, I do love a couple of the one-liners like the Cassidy's thing and, and hell the, the, oh, we don't like this! Jack Smash! Even that can get a chuckle out of me. But there's really nothing else. It's a forgettable at worst. Average at best. I will say middle of the road as well. Yeah, most definitely. Definitely, the, I, I thought Princess Spike would be the lowest point of the of the season. It kind of still is, but this one is right next to it. <laughs> oh no! Mm-hmm. But anyway, oh, yes. James, what's next week's review going to be? We are going to be reviewing not an episode of the show, but a comic. We're going to be reviewing Friends Forever issue number fifteen, starring Applejack and Major Mare, written by Bobby Curno, with art by Brenda Hickey and colors by Heather Breckel. But that will be a story for another time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, oh. thank you guys so much for. Oh, what? What is it, Norman? Oh, I just need to add in that to you audience out there who are listening to this do comment down because I do read your comments and I do interact with you guys and I've been talking to a lot of you and it's fun like I do like your point of views so yeah do keep on doing so because I love hearing your point of views on the show slash comics too 
Even if they are always wrong because we have a show on the internet and that makes us more legit. <laughs> no, na, 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 na. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I get double featured, so I'm doubly right. No quadruple right. I'm do do. You broke me. Oh. <laughs> oh well. But that will be a story for another time. See you guys on the next NBA show reviews. This has been James Cork. Um, yeah, really enjoyed the episode. So um, I'm going to go now. So I'm Mad Munchkin. Stay creative. And I am Norman Sanzo. And I do not like this episode because it's not perfect. Done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay give well, that was fun. Yep. <laughs> Are we too late? Are we too late?